Hi, I'm James Muir. Welcome to another Make More Noise screencast. A very long time ago, uh, November 29th, 2009, according to this, I did a tutorial showing how to install audio units plugins for Logic Pro. Uh, but this was under Apple's operating system 10.6.8, or Snow Leopard as it was known. And since then, we've obviously had Lion and Mountain Lion 10.7 and 10.8, respectively. And we even know now that 10.9 should be out this year. Now, the process for installing these plugins has changed under 10.7 and 10.8. That's Lion and Mountain Lion. Uh, you're going to get sick of hearing me say Lion and Mountain Lion and 10.7 and 10.8, but it's really important to be clear. If you want to install plugins for older operating systems up to 10.6.8 Snow Leopard, you need to watch this tutorial here, Installing an AU Plugin in Logic Pro. This tutorial is going to be for 10.7 and 10.8. So might pay you to watch the old tutorial, might pay you to ignore it entirely. So let's get some plugins to install and we'll get rolling. So I'm going to download a couple of free plugins. I think you know this is a personal little peccadillo of mine. I do like a free plugin. Uh, so we're going to have Mini Spillage from audiospillage.com, which is a free drum machine plugin, a uh, drum synthesizer, I should say. And from Klanghelm, um, I'm going to do DC1A, which is a freeware compressor plugin. I've already downloaded those, so we don't have to go through the process of looking at each download. So let me just quit Safari. Don't quit Safari when I do. Um, and we'll get rolling. Okay, so here's the two plugins I was talking about, uh, DC1A and Mini Spillage. Uh, they should have, when you downloaded them, automatically gone to your downloads folder, which you can pick up here, uh, depending on how you've got your bar set up on your Mac. I have mine down the left-hand side here, but you'll have a downloads folder regardless of where you have the bar. Um, and DC1A, as I said. So Mini Spillage and DC1A, um, you can get an installer for both of these plugins, but I've downloaded um, slightly different versions because I want to show you the two different ways of doing things. So Mini Spillage comes bundled with a proper installer program. So it's a .dmg, disk image, and you get a package. Now, if you look at any piece of software that comes with a package like this, it should be just as simple as double-clicking the package to launch it, you might have terms and conditions here that you need to sign and continue and you just follow the on-screen prompts all the way through. Just obviously read your license if you want to. Keep following the prompts. Agree. I'm going to do a standard install so I don't need to change install location. Just press install and then it'll want your password so it knows that you're allowed to install stuff. Okay, so that's mini spillage installing. I'm just going to close that down and launch Logic. I might do a little cutaway while this happens because this might take a few seconds. But uh, it should be interesting to note that when we get into the process here as it's scanning the audio units plugins, it should see there's a new plugin, Mini Spillage, scan it. And then when Logic launches, I'm just going to do a new empty project software instrument because it's a software instrument rather than an effects plugin create a track uh, it does its normal thing of loading an EVP 88 for no apparent reason uh, worth mentioning because this comes up a bit on the old uh, installing AU plugins video we've got on our YouTube channel uh, this is where you load effects from but if you want to pick up an audio instrument you load it from just above the output routing here so where it says IO then you've got your output, stereo output, and this is where you load it from. So in our AU instruments, we should have a new section, uh, which I won't have seen before, for audio spillage, mini spillage, load up a stereo instance. Um, I'm just going to load a preset very quickly from a factory kit. And that's how you load any plugin that comes with a package. Uh, they normally are disk images, DMGs, as you download them, and then you'll look for the little package, double click it, follow through the prompts on the screen. Most commercial paid for plugins will be like that. Um, the only time it's a little bit more complicated is if you buy something that comes with an audio library, contact, or any of the big sampler instruments. 
you will then have to install the audio that comes with it as well. But as I say, with most of those, there's simple, easily understood on-screen prompts and you just follow them through. So any paid for plugin and even some of the free ones, that's your methodology for installing them. Where it gets a little more, bit more complicated, and I'm just going to um, Apple H to hide logic, and we'll have a look at uh, the DC1A version I downloaded. Now, these are plugins that don't come with an installer package, that don't come with a disk image. And what we need to do to install an audio unit is we need this .component file. Now, back in the olden days, you would just drag this to the right location on your computer, drop it in the library, and launch Logic like we did earlier, let Logic scan, it would find your plugin and off you go. But what's happened uh, in 10.7 and 10.8 is Log uh, Logic, um, Apple have decided in their wisdom that they're going to hide some of the folders from users. I think it's uh, the idea is they don't want you going poking around in the guts too much, which is not that helpful if you've got one of these types of plugins that comes without an installer package. So there's now two ways that we can install this. So if you go to the Go menu at the top of your standard desktop, you'll see that we've got all kinds of places we can go, all my files, documents, desktop, downloads, home, computer, network. But there's no library entry here. Now, if you hold down the Alt key while you've got this window open, or while you've got this drop-down open, I should say, you'll notice that library suddenly appears. So if I take my finger off the Alt key... It disappears, hold my finger back down and library appears again. So this is to install if you are logged in under your user account. So this would go in your home library. So if we now click on library while we've got it shown using the alt key to show and hide it, you'll see that we then open up our library. And if we come down our list here, we've got audio. Um, if they don't come up in this order, you can just click on name and it will put them in alphabetical order and therefore audio will be fairly near the top. So you double click audio, double click plugins, and then you've got a folder here called components. And as you can see, we've got a few AUs installed here already. Amplification light, uh, the PTEQ1A, which I think we did a video on recently, and uh, another EQ there. Now we can drag the DC1A component into our library, it's copied across, and again, if we launch Logic, or actually in this case if we quit Logic, and relaunch Logic, you see it scan the DC1A again, same thing, I'm just going to do a new empty project, uh, do an audio track this time, let's do a stereo one, and Again, if we go to where we instantiate our effects plugins from, which are the inserts here, which are sort of midway near the top of the channel strip, audio units, and then we browse to Klanghelm, DC1A stereo. And there is our freeware plugin installed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quit Logic again, and I'm going to drag that DC1A component out, just going to launch Logic again very quickly to show you that that's cleared. And when we browse to our Klanghelm drop-down this time, we've just got the uh, IVGI, which is their saturation plugin. So this is the third possible way of installing an audio unit plugin, and this is the one I would actually recommend, because this is going to put it into the root library rather than into the library that goes with your user account. But unfortunately, it's also the most complicated way of doing it. You actually need to have a, a little bit of... It's not really code, it's just an address that we can put into the Go menu. So bear with me two seconds, I'll get that set up. So starting again with the Go menu and browsing down to the bottom, go to folder, which is accessible through the key command, shift apple G or shift command G, and click on that. Oh, it's obviously the last place I went, uh, so this is the address we're looking for, library forward slash audio forward slash plugins. So you may be able to remember that, but I will stick it up on our Tumblr, so you can just copy and paste it straight in. So I'm just going to hit go, and then you'll see this is our plugins folder. We've got VST, VST3, uh, Mass, Hal, 
Don't know what PTAFs are. That's interesting. Not seen those before. Anyway, we know we need the components folder for audio units. So I'm double clicking components. I'm just going to put it into list view, which you can do by clicking up here. And you'll see from the sheer volume of plugins that this is where I install most of my plugins. So if we look at our list here, they come up in alphabetical order. And because we just uninstalled the DC1A, we've got nothing under D. Nope, nothing there. So I can open our DC1A folder again, drag the component across, let go, and that's now installed in the right folder. So after our CS80 and before the DCAM free comp. So we can shut both of those windows down now and launch Logic for the third and final time. And I'm going to do the same again. New, empty project, audio, create, and browse to Klanghelm, DC18, and there's our DC18 compressor. So that's your three basic routes for installing an audio units plugin, which is if it comes with a disk image and a package, just double click and follow the prompts through on screen. If it's a purchase plugin and that doesn't work, then contact the manufacturer's tech support and get them to talk you through what the problem is. If it's a bit of freeware uh, and it just comes as a dot component file, you can, as we discussed earlier, use the go menu and the alt key to find your user library. Then it's audio plugins and components or third and probably most useful which is to install it in the root folder so it'll be available for all users of the computer go to folder use the path forward slash library forward slash audio forward slash plugins and drag it into the components folder components and that is all of our plugins so that is how you install an audio unit plugin to use in Logic uh, for the operating systems 10.7 and 10.8 or Lion and Mountain Lion respectively. And let's hope they don't change it for 10.9 whenever that comes out or I'll have to do another tutorial video. Hope that's been some help. I've been James Muir. Thanks very much for watching.